Hi there, this is Vector Static Centroids, and uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, essentially how, how to determine where the centroid is and what functions that we're going to utilize to get there. So, um, basically, a centroid can be found along any coordinate axes. So, uh, in our case, we you typically will have x, y, and z, right? So, um, if you wanted to find the centroid, the x-coordinate of the centroid, what you would do is you would multiply and find the sum of the products and basically what it is is it's almost like uh, maybe like the x-coordinate of the centroid of that segment of the object. So, um, let me just write the equation and then I can kind of explain it. xi wi over the sum of wi. And it's similar for the y functions. What you'll see is the sum of the product, um, which would be yi wi. And all w is in this case is, um, you know, the weight. but when you're talking about, say, plates or things that are basically universal thickness, you can actually substitute W with area. And with um, constant density objects, you can substitute with um, with volume. So it, it, it's, it's up to you what you choose to do. Um, and when you start mixing various uh, different materials, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to compensate and redo uh, and redraw it with similar materials and then use these same techniques. So, just kind of a, a, a way to think about it. So, anyway, um, basically what you see is these three functions, and I just I'm going to focus on just a one-dimensional kind of example just to show you a feel for it and then what we're going to do in the following video is some I'll give you a table of essentially just some tabulated results and then we can work from there so um, we're only going to deal with a one-dimensional problem here so think of it as just a beam so um, a 1D problem for example Okay, so what we're going to have here is, let's just look at the simple beam. I don't know where it's attached or anything like that, don't ask me. Um, just understand that the beam's 10 feet long, and that's just for making the math easier. And um, you understand that the center of every square is just like that. It's The centroid is in the center. And we know that that's halfway, you know, 5 and 5. And the same on the other side. And uh, just so you know, um, whenever you're doing a centroid, you just have to pick a point of reference. Uh, that way you don't get yourself all confused. So um, for this one, I'm just going to pick the very bottom left, right down here, bottom left, this little beam, just to kind of give us a, a sense of direction or, or location, rather. So... Um, from that point, we would label x as how far the centroid is from that point of reference. So, what would the calculation be? So, do the calc, you'll have five times uh, its area, the entire area, which would be the weight of the object. So, you, if you had the weight, you would be plugging this in here. Or, if areas is easier to work with, then you just go with that. It's all dependent on what you have available to you. So, um, for us, we could just put in W for this case, but um, just so we know, let's let's make it let's give it a weight. Um, the weight of the beam is let's say 400 pounds. Okay, so five times 400 pounds all over the total weight, which is 400. Well, I mean. That just gives us 5, correct? So we know at 5 feet, that's where our x bar is. And that's just, just like we see it here, it's right in the middle. 
right over where we thought that where the centroid is for that beam. That makes sense. We didn't add any weight on there. Let's do another one just and we'll add maybe a box on. Uh, let's add the box just to the left of the centroid, okay? So we're going to redraw this little beam here. Except this time there's going to be something different. We're going to add, let's just say, here's our centroid from before, but what about a box that's 50 pounds? Remember that the centroid of the box is also in the very center, and let's give this a distance of, I don't know, three feet from the um, from our little reference point, right? So now you have a 50 pound box and also the centroid. Well, let's do the calculation. The sum of the products, x times the weight. So, for the beam it's 5, because that's the distance to the centroid, times 400, just like we, we did before plus now the box distance is three because it's three from the from the x-axis or the point of reference then 50 pounds okay well then you have to divide it by the summation of all of the weight so that's 450 plus the 400, or 450, which is 50 plus the 400 pound beam. So that would be 450 total. So what you get here, if you kind of work it out, is you get 4.78 feet. And that's your X bar. And that all that means is that your combined centroid for the this shape would be slightly to the left of the original centroid. So, quite literally, if we had our beam right here, it would be just right here. Just to the left. Just because of that box. That's what the, the effect of the box would be. Continuing on, if we look at another beam, have a bigger box over here which is a hundred pounds and then our original smaller box 50 pounds and if we just include that what we'll have is we'll have 5 times 400 plus 3 times 50 plus 100 times the distance which I'm gonna just label as 1 1 foot all over the total weight, which is going to be 450 plus 100, that will be 550 pounds. And if you work that out, our X bar is going to be now 4.09 pounds, or feet. So you can see how, as we add weight more and more on the left hand side, this centroid is being moved further and further left. It's just because it's almost like a, it's basically a weighted average. That's how you have to look at it. So let's see if we can counteract that. Let's um, keep the same beam with all those boxes on it. So you have your 100 pounds over here. You have your 50 pounds right here, all in the same place, okay? So I don't want to rewrite all that. But what about this one? Let's put a 300 pound container one foot away from the end. So if we do that calculation that would be 5 times 400 plus 3 times 50 plus 1 times 100 plus 9 times 300 and it's 9 because we have to make sure that we always do our measurements from this same reference point which would be 9 from here all over the total weight which is 850 pounds when you work that out you'll have a 5.82 feet 
which means that it has gone past the centroid point. It's no longer there, it's somewhere past there because that was actually 300 pounds, much more heavy. And one thing to note is when you have a 2D problem, you can have objects similar shaped to this, which the centroid will sometimes lie off or outside of the object's area, and that's okay. Just realize what's happening and that uh, you don't expect the material to be there. So just understand what's going on. That's all I say. I'll see you guys in the next video.